Lesson 10, Indigenous Cultures, The Survival of the Maya of Mesoamerica. Introduction. You are traveling by bus through the highlands of Guatemala. The road winds through steep, misty mountains and passes small mud brick houses set in fields of corn. The bus is piled high with bags, bundles, and even a crate of live chickens. Most of the passengers on your bus are Maya Indians. The woman next to you is wearing a colorful headdress and a beautiful woven blouse called a huipo. As she gives her children a snack of corn tortillas, she talks to them in a language you don't recognize. You feel like you are a world away from everything familiar. Suddenly, you hear a ringing sound. The woman reaches into her bag pulls out a cell phone and begins speaking in Spanish. You have just witnessed an example of how old and new cultures are blending together in the Maya world. Maya Indians are one of the largest groups of indigenous peoples in the Americas. Indigenous peoples are natives of an area who have been conquered or dominated by other people who came to the area later. Indigenous peoples often try to preserve their traditional culture or the customs and ways of life handed down from their ancestors. Maya Indians still maintain much of their traditional culture, but they have also changed along with the world around them. In this lesson, you will learn how the Maya have both preserved their traditions and adapted to or changed with modern life. The essential question for this lesson is how do indigenous peoples preserve their traditional culture while adapting to modern life? This illustration shows where the highland Maya live. The Mayan highlands stretch from southern Mexico through Guatemala. Notice the photograph of a highland village. You will learn about key features of a Maya life in a village like this one. Keep the illustration in mind as you try to answer the essential question. So at the end of this lesson, we're going to be able to answer how do indigenous peoples preserve their traditional culture while adapting to modern life. Section 1, the geographic setting. The Maya live in an ancient cultural region known as Mesoamerica. A cultural region is an area with a distinct culture or a set of similar cultures. Mesoamerica stretches from central Mexico to the Isthmus of Panama, a region that includes hot jungle lowlands, dry plateaus, and cool mountain highlands. The Maya created an advanced civilization. About 2,000 years ago, the Maya created a remarkable civilization in Mesoamerica. They built great stone cities with towering pyramids, some of which stand today. They developed a writing system and created the first books ever produced in the Western Hemisphere. They also developed an advanced system of mathematics and combined their knowledge of math and astronomy to create one of the world's most accurate calendars. Around 900 CE or 900 Common Era, the Maya civilization collapsed. Scholars believe that drought, warfare, and other problems led to a sharp decline in population and the Maya abandoned their cities. Then in the 1500s, Spanish soldiers arrived and took over the region, which was later divided among several countries. Today, there are around 6 million Maya. Some still live in the lowlands, especially Mexican's Yucatan Peninsula, but most live in the highlands of Guatemala and the Mexican state of Chiapas. The Mayan highlands are a rugged landscape of steep mountains and deep valleys. Heavy clouds often hang over the mountains, and moisture from the clouds helps produce dense cloud forests. A line of great volcanoes rises up along the southern edge of the highlands. These volcanoes have erupted many times in the past, covering the land with lava and ash. Several of these volcanoes are still active. 
Volcanic ash has enriched the soil in much of the highland region, and as a result, the land is generally fertile and good for agriculture. Most Maya practice subsistence farming, which means they farm mainly to provide food for themselves and their families. In general, they sell very little of the food they grow. The mountain geography of the highlands has helped isolate the Maya from the rest of the world. Few roads cross the highlands and many Maya live in remote areas miles from the nearest town. This isolation has limited contact between the Maya and others, but it has also helped the Maya survive as a people and preserve their culture. Not only has the mountain geography separated the Maya from the outside world, it has also separated different Maya groups from one another. Over time, the Maya in different areas have developed their own customs and languages. More than two dozen distinct Maya groups now live scattered across Mesoamerica, each speaking its own language and wearing its own special form of dress. Despite these differences, the Maya are still a single ethnic group meaning they share common physical features and a cultural identity. They also share the challenge of making adaptations to modern life. An adaptation is a change in a ray of life to suit new conditions. As the story in the introduction shows, old and new are blending in the Maya world. Our geo terms for this lesson, some we've already um, come across, but some we will come and speak more of later on. We have adaptation, which is a change in a way of life to suit new conditions. We have indigenous peoples, natives of an area who have been conquered or dominated by others who came later. Uh, American Indian tribes such as the Cherokee and the Navajo are indigenous peoples. Subsistence farming, Farming carried out mainly to provide food for farm families with little surplus for sale to others. And traditional culture, customs and ways of life handed down from ancestors. Here we have a map of the Maya area showing the different types of languages that are spoken in each area. There are as many as 31 Maya languages, each spoken in a particular part of the Maya region. Among the most widely spoken highland languages are Quiche, Cachiquel, Siotso, and Celtal. Many Maya also speak Spanish. The Highlands of Guatemala and Southern Mexico The Mayan highlands isolate groups of Maya from one another and from the outside world. High peaks and deep valleys separate one mountain range from another. Some Maya villages are perched on high mountain ridges, and many can be reached only on narrow paths. So you can imagine living someplace in a mountain range. You can't quite easily get to your neighbors or your friends if they live in a different part of the area. A strong sense of community. Several Maya judges are seated at a table with two men standing before them. One man claims that the other killed and ate one of his chickens, while the accused says the chicken entered his yard and ate his chicken feed. Finally, one of the judges speaks up. In the Quiche language, he says, you will pay the man for his chicken by working for three days in his fields. This story is an example of Maya community justice. As you will see, this justice system is one part of the Maya's deep attachment to their local villages and their strong traditions of self-rule. These traditions are part of what enables the Maya to preserve their way of life while adapting to the influences of the modern world. The Highland Maya are citizens of either Mexico or Guatemala. Over time, their local communities have adapted to the demands of national life. For example, 
Most Highland towns have a mayor who governs the community according to national laws. The Maya also have their own traditional form of government. Many towns have a municipal council that follows Maya customs. The council members are respected members of the community and make decisions based on traditional values. Maya towns also have religious brotherhood, brotherhoods. In Guatemala, the brotherhoods are called cofradías, while in Chiapas, they are called cargos. These brotherhoods are responsible for guarding the image of Catholic saints and for organizing ceremonies and festivals. The heads of these brotherhoods are also important community leaders. The Maya work hard to keep their communities together. One way they do this is through their justice system. Maya judges rarely send offenders to jail, which would take those offenders away from their families and hurt the community. Instead, offenders usually pay for crimes through labor or community service, a traditional form of punishment known as restitution. At the same time, the Maya have also adapted to national laws. For serious crimes, such as murder, Maya judges turn offenders over to the national courts. In spite of their strong tradition of community problem solving, some Maya face challenges that prompt them to leave the community. Poverty, unemployment, lack of good schools, and inadequate health care have caused some Maya to move to cities to find work or to get an education. Maya villages are a mix of old and new. The ancestral shrine on the left and sacred trees in this illustration are traditional. The tree connects heaven and earth in ancient Maya religion. The plaza, with its Spanish colonial buildings, is an adaptation to the outside world. So you can see they have their tree, which is something super important in their Maya religion. But they also have the, you know, the little church on the outside, surrounded by Spanish buildings. So those came later. Those were not there before. The traditional home and family. Home and family are the foundation of Maya life. Most Maya families live in simple one-room dwellings constructed of wood or mud brick called adobe. But the Maya don't see a house as just an arrangement of building materials. Rather, they envision their dwelling as a living thing with a soul like a person. In fact, the Maya believe that everything on earth is alive. Before they build a house, they hold a ceremony to request the earth's permission. The old and new at home. A traditional Maya house is simple on the inside. The floors are made of packed earth and there is little furniture. A family might own hammocks for sleeping. They might also have a small wooden table and chairs. A cook fire typically sits in the middle of the floor with a few clay pots by the side. Or there might be a small cookhouse next door. There's also a family altar for religious wor worship. The traditional Maya home is also changing. Some houses in larger towns have electricity and running water, and others have a radio or a television. Metal and plastic cooking utensils are now common, and some homes even have gas stoves, blenders, and other appliances. Men's and Women's Roles there is still a very clear division of labor between men and women in most Maya communities. The men work in the fields, planting, weeding, and harvesting the crops, and occasionally hunt wild animals. The women work mostly at home, caring for the children and weaving clothes for the family. Women also cook the meals, consisting mainly of beans and tortillas, which most women make the traditional way. They pat the corn dough out by hand and fry it on a griddle. Some women, however, use a tortilla press made of metal. 
Most children go to school, though many quit at an early age to help out at home. Parents teach their children traditional skills, such as farming and weaving, as well as the old customs that children are expected to pass on to their own children. Still, many young Maya also adopt new ways. They may listen to popular music and wear jeans, t-shirts, and sneakers instead of traditional Maya clothing. On Thursday, we will continue the rest of Lesson 10. For today, we are finished. So you can pause this video and go work on your worksheet. I will see you on Thursday.